much. We talked about expressions of I mute all of you. I only want one person to talk at a time. Uh -huh. uh -huh. All right, all right, all right. Now, the problem I have with many of you here. If at all you want to talk to the teacher, you put up your hand, the teacher will select you. So we have dealt away with your noise. Now, I was saying that I am hearing voices of boys. Are they part of us? <laughs> I heard a vo voices of boys. I'm wondering whether you gave your boyfriends our passwords. That was very wrong. Is that very clear? If you did it at all, somebody is putting up the hand. Uh -huh. Yes? Um, teacher. Um, teacher, I was going to give a contribution. Um, the last time we were here, we learned about expressions of purpose. Uh, under that, we learned about the use of in case. And uh, so that, as well as in order that, um, and we also learned that expressions of purpose are like they express why something is done. For example, um, the minister returned home in order that he may discuss the situation with the president. Um, the reason for for returning home was that he would discuss the situation with the president. So yeah. Thank you very much. I am very grateful. Now, um, so we are now going to talk about relative clauses. I saw the order that. What is the order that? There are supposed to be two words. Those are two words. Have you heard? Yes. So we write like this. Like that. It stops being in order. It's in order. Which is wrong. I hope you are getting it well. So we can now move on. We are talking about relative clauses. That's what we are talking about today. Talking about relative clauses. Relative clauses. That is our topic. Uh, now, before we go on 
to talk about relative clauses, we want to know what a clause is. What is a clause? Who can explain to us what a clause is? What is a clause? Somebody who can tell us what a clause is? Before we go on, we must understand what this means. You put up the hand, I will select you, and then you'll give us what it is. Any person telling us what? Uh-huh. I can see one person. This is, is it Kaihura, who, what? I don't know. Uh, yes. What is happening now? Mr. Sokoji. And we call Nako Tambula Tam, that is the thing. Ask to unmute. Yeah, you know, Korea and you can get a notification that you have been asked to unmute. Teacher, uh -huh. I, think, I think the word clause means like the sentence that brings more meaning. Uh huh. A sentence like that brings. That two, like if there are two sentences, there is the main clause and the one that has less information about whatever is happening. Okay, thank you very much. I can still see another hand. This is uh, who? Yolanda? Is it called Yolanda? Yes? Yolanda, talk. Not talking. Who is this one again? Uh huh. Perth? A clause is a group of words that includes a subject and a verb. Yeah. So you have a dictionary there, I can believe. Don't you think so? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Uh, but it is not yet complete. It is very true. A clause uh, is a group of words that includes a subject and a verb. To do what? To do what? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to Victoria. Yes, Victoria. It is a group of words that includes a subject and a verb to form a sentence or part of a sentence. To form a simple sentence or part of what? A sentence. Thank you very much. So now, that is what we call uh, a clause. I'm not going to do much of the writing this time. You have to do it. Uh, we are saying a clause is a group of words that includes that includes a group of words that includes a subject it includes a subject and a verb and a verb to form to form a simple sentence or part of a sentence. So the sentence might be full, and the all the sentence might, might just be part of it. Now, what is there for a relative clause? How do you know? that we are dealing with relative clauses. So
So, so what is a relative clause? Somebody to define for us a relative clause. What is a relative clause? What is a relative clause? And we move on. Somebody to explain what a relative clause is? No answer? So we are writing a relative, okay, let's see this person here. Can you talk now? Um, teacher, a relative clause is a clause that is related to a pronoun that is related, is attached by a relative pronoun. Attached by a relative pronoun. Now what is a relative pronoun? Mm -hmm. We are going to, is it Reina? Yes, Reina? Reina, are you talking? Um, excuse me, teacher. I just wanted to the, the, the definition of the clause. What's a clause? Have you just joined? Have you just joined? No. no what have My you? internet. Okay, we shall review. Went on. At the end. Is that very clear? So I want you to. We shall review. No, what have you? We shall review at the end. Uh huh. Is somebody have unmuted talk? Lopatra? Um, teach. Teach a relative clause is a clause. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, can you hear me? A relative clause is a relative clause is a is a part of a sentence that cannot exist independently and describes a noun that comes before the name. Okay, now we are writing. That a relative clause, a clause, a relative clause is a clause attached. Relative clause is a clause attached to, attached to, an accident, an accident by relative pronoun, by a relative pronoun, a relative pronoun. And what is that relative pronoun? Such as such as who, which, that, etc. That is what we call a relative pronoun. So we have said for that one who did not understand what uh, a clause is, we said a clause is that group of words that include a subject and a verb to form, to form a simple sentence. So when we are looking at a relative clause, we are looking at that part of a sentence that group of words that include a subject and a verb attached to an 
preceded by a relative pronoun. What is this relative pronoun? We are looking at who is a relative pronoun, which is a relative pronoun, that is a relative pronoun. Now, we want to understand what an accident means. Eh? Accident here. What does it mean, accident? Uh, accident here simply means a thing that exists before. It simply means a thing that exists before. That's what we call accident, a thing that exists before or precedes or precedes uh, another or precedes another. I want us to look at these two words. We have pre and we have pro. This goes backwards. This goes in front. So when we say precedes, it means that group of words that will appear before. That's what we are calling it. Uh, that's what we are calling precedes or an it uh, accident. So we are saying relative clauses. Why do we use relative clauses? Why do we use relative clauses when we are constructing sentences verbally or in written form? We have this lady called Yolanda who has been here for, the hand has been up for some time. Now talk. Yolanda, your hand has been up, talk. Um. We use we use relative clauses to make to make clear. Wait, sorry, teacher. We make, we use relative no, I, clauses I, 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 clauses to make clear which person or thing we are talking about. Which person or thing we are talking about? Thank you. Any other? Any other? Why do we use? relative clauses in our day-to-day -day, uh, conversations, written work, and so forth. Why? Who can also try? Uh-huh. This is uh, who? Christo? Yes, Christo? Um, to give extra information of about the subject and what is going on. Thank you very much. So relative clauses are used to give extra information. To give extra information on something. Is that very clear? So we give, and this is something normally we do, or the information, extra information is definitely information about nouns about nouns. That's why we use them. In the main clause, please, about nouns in the main clause. In the main clause. So relative clauses in most cases are used to give extra information about nouns in the main clause. So what is this main clause we are talking about? That's where the subject is, definitely, when we are talking about relative clauses. So you know any word that gives extra information in a, in a noun, on a noun, is called an adjective. Is that it so? So these ones also here can as well be adjectives. That is why we construct senses using relative clauses. Okay, 
I want us to give, I want you to answer these questions for me. How would you go about this? If I ask a question, where is the boy? Where is the boy? What can you say about that question? What can you say about that question? Where is the boy? Mm-hmm. Wendy, 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 Wendy is saying something. Uh, okay, Wendy. Um, this question actually brings about another question, like which boy are you talking about? Exactly. Where is the boy? Which boy? So I know you would ask a question. What or which boy? Is it so? How would you answer if you have such a question? Eh? Where is the boy? I just come to class and I say, where is the boy? A sober-minded student will always put up the hand and say, but sir, which boy? How would you answer? That question still Wendy? Is it so? Who else? Who else is trying? Looking at people who are trying. Any other? Where is the boy? I'm waiting for the hand and we move on. Nobody and we continue? Okay. So if you ask for the boy, or oh, what sort of answer will you definitely expect? I would expect somebody to tell me possibly the boy who came in late. Hmm? Say, if you ask me, which boy? I would say the boy who came in late. And how would you answer that for in full? I've asked the question, where is, where is the boy? And then you also ask, which boy? I tell you the boy who came in late. How would you now give me a full answer to that? How would you give me a full answer to that? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is uh, Winnie, 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 please. Winnie, can you give us the answer? Where is the boy who came in late? That is now the question. I want the answer. I want the answer? Okay. Crystal. Mm -hmm. The boy who came in late is seated in class. He's seated in class, but I'm not seeing him. That's why I'm asking, where is the boy? Do you think that is the answer I would demand from you? Hmm? Is this Shahida? Is it Shahida who? Yes? The boy who came in late is lying under the mango tree. He's lying under the mango tree. But now I'm already in class. The boy must be in class. He came in late. How can he? Are you telling me the class is under the mango tree? Mm -hmm. Another person, this is uh, Regina. Yes? What is his name? Oh, sorry. Is that an answer, Regina? Is that an answer? Mm -hmm. I'm going to his name? I'm going to Huda. Yes, Huda. I thought Huda would give us the answer. Can you differentiate between an answer and a question? That is now Luta. Yes. Um, teacher, I was answering your first question of where is yeah. that boy? No, um, they have already given us. I said, number one, I come in 
And I say, where is the boy? And your question is, which boy? And then, sir, so I said, the boy who came in late. So the full question was, where is the boy who came in late? The boy who oh, came in late. That question. There is somebody who said, the boy who came in late is lying on the mango tree. But I'm asking, I'm in class. I'm not under, he must be in class. That is the answer I want you to give me. Okay, let's go to Yolanda. The boy, the boy who came in late is sitting at the back of the is sitting at the back of the is, class. Is sitting at the back or in the corner of the class. Is that very clear? Mm -hmm. For the yeah. class. So now we can now say the boy who came in late, who came in late is, let's say, seated at the back of the classroom. Full stop. Is that very clear? So we now have a full sentence. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Please, you are. We are saying the boy who came in late is seated at the back of the classroom. Now, what we have here, the boy, this is a relative pronoun, who came in late is seated at the back of the classroom. In this sentence, we have two parts of the sentence. One is what we call a main sentence. Then the second one, we call it a subordinate or dependent. It depends on the other. These two sentences, parts of the sentences, are joined together by a relative word pronoun, which is who. Is that very clear? Therefore, this sentence is called a relative clause. Do you understand me now very well? Therefore, that sentence is called a relative clause. So how do I know that the sentences I'm dealing with are relative clauses? Number one, when they have relative pronouns when they have relative pronouns. Which are these relative pronouns? I said, if you have any sentence joined together by such words as who, as which, as that, then we know that one is a relative clause. So that's what we are dealing with. Okay, let me give you another example of such sentences. We connect them together and see. So these relative clauses are of two types, but we shall look at that later. So if somebody says, uh, A boy fell off his bicycle. A boy fell off his bicycle. A boy fell off his bicycle. That is our sentence. Who can give us a question on to that? Who can give us a question on to that? A boy fell off his bicycle. I see somebody calls it Remina. I don't know whether that is Remina or who. Mm -hmm. Talk, Remina. I've admitted Remina. 
two east. Not talking, there is a, I can go to Sibia, is it Sibia? Uh-huh. Are you talking Sibia? No. There is Mel Mel Melanie. Melanie, please. People are not talking, yes? Speak louder. Which boy fell off? Which boy fell off? We are now going to use like the first one. Mm -hmm. And we now question ourselves on that. That's what we are going to use where? Uh -huh. I've unmuted somebody. Who is that one? Talk. You people. Yes, please. Okay, thank you very much. Uh -huh. So can we have Crystal also asking for the rest to hear? Do I have any problem with my... Okay, here the question would be, where is the boy who fell off his bicycle. Question mark, where is the boy who fell off his bicycle? That is the question I wanted. Because this question here is going to give us a clear answer. Can we now answer that one? Where is the boy who fell off his bicycle? Who can assist us Answer when I gave Huda the other time, Huda did it, answer. I'm wondering why, let me go to Joy. Joy, 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 Joy. Joy, I have unmuted you, talk. Is there any problem that I can't get you if you are talking at all? Let me go to, uh, is it Reina or who? Reina, talk. I've unmuted you. Is it me with a problem or you people have problems? Mm-hmm. Mariam, put your second name. Mariam, put your second name. I see. Uh, okay, fine. Not a part of me. Okay, let me have Muingo. Muingo, can you talk? The boy who fell off. The boy who fell off his bicycle is the sick day. The boy who fell off his bicycle is in the sick bed. Thank you very much. That is one of the uh, best we can have. Meaning we are talking about a particular boy who fell off the bicycle. Uh-huh. Huda, do you still have some answer for me? Yes, Huda? Would I can't hear you? There is nothing coming from you. What about you? Is it Amra? Amra, anything you want to say?
Okay, so that is what we have, such uh, sentences. If you say the boy who fell off his bicycle is in the sick bed. So we have this with what we call relative clauses. That's what we call relative clauses. Yes, please. Can we use which or what? We just use where? Uh, no, here. We want to know the particular boy, so we, we, we cannot use which in the asking. We are going to use where. We want to know where the boy is. So there's no way you can use which or what, okay? All right, so we are moving on and we are looking at uh, that and which. When do we use that and when do we use which in such sentences? When do we use that and when do we use uh, which? So we have these ones here. So we normally say who is used only for persons. Who? So who is for persons? So when we are constructing sentences and we, want, we are using who as a relative pronoun, that is for persons. But when we are talking about things, so when we talk about the things, uh, we must use either that, so, that, or which. This is what we have. We use uh, uh, that and which when we are dealing with things. For example, the question we, uh, would be, where is the book? Where is the book? Then we have our question mark. So when we ask, where is the book? Then you will ask me a question. Uh, according to the book here, they are asking, the question is, what book? What book? And then they are saying, the book that. Saying the book that, the book that, or they are saying which, the book that or which was the book which or which was uh, that was on this table on this table so this is what we can do the book that or which was on this table that is the one that we do what we use. So if you have that, fine. If you are using uh, which, fine. But we are told who is for persons, that and which is for things. And then somebody says, some money was in the bag. If we can take that. Some money was in the bag. I'm going to say some money was in the bag. And the question here we will say, what happened to that money? So what? happened 
to that money that was in the bank. That is the question. What happened to that money which was in the bank? And somebody will, let's take this one as A, this is B, and then C, somebody will say it was stolen. Full stop. It was stolen. Now, can you give me a full sentence combining all these as a relative clause? Just a moment. I wanted to read this, these things of yours, and uh, I want now to have a full to view my people. But yeah, but, but I want to give you some really close and close. Okay, thank you. All right, now we can have uh, this time it is. Uh, Elizabeth, 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 can you give us now a full sentence? Um, the money that was in the bag was stolen. The money that was in the bag was stolen. Thank you very much. So we, uh, we have dealt with those sentences. Now, let us do this. Join Join is now an activity. Join is now an activity. And we are saying join the following pairs. Join the following pairs. Following pairs of join the following pairs of sentences of sentences by changing by by changing. The first statement, the first statement, by changing the first statement into a relative clause, into a relative clause. Yes. So now the first one, number one. Number one is a certain doc boxer. A certain boxer. Well. Out of the ring. A certain boxer fell out of the ring. He finally, he finally won the, he finally won the fight. 
That is number one. Number two says, number two says, a certain uh, stone fell on my head. A certain, let's say, a certain jackfruit. That foot fell on my head. Stop. It weighed. It weighed. It weighed uh, seven kilograms. Weight seven kilograms. Number three. Number three says certain pupils get everything right. Certain pupils get everything. Stop. They are doing well. They are doing well. Full stop. So we want to look at those three sentences. We want to look at those three sentences. And you join them together, you are going to mark yours here. Have you finished number one? Yes. Mm -hmm. Give me the answer. Come again. Why do you use he? The second part of the sentence. He. Remove he. Uh -huh. So we are going to number one and number one. Uh, our team is giving us the answer. Yes, our team. Um, teacher number one. Mm. The boxer who fell out of the ring won the fight. The boxer. Boxer. Okay, the boxer who fell out of. But have you used all the words that are there, in, especially in the first sentence? Did you? Teacher, you no. want me to put? Uh huh. <laughs> Muingo. Number one. Yes, please. Uh, let me see. The boxer who fell out of the ring finally won the fight. Really? Isn't that what your friend also uh -huh. talked about? Uh huh. This is uh, Elizabeth. No. Yes. 
Elizabeth? Um, the boxer who fell out of the ring finally won the fight. You know him? The boxer who fell out. Do you know him? That is the question. Do you know that boxer? No. Okay. Now, why do you say that? Because that is an article used only on items that are known to you. We don't know him. That is why we are saying a certain boxer. Is that very clear? Chirabo, let's go to Chirabo and see what did Chirabo say? Mm -hmm. Yes, Chirabo. Chirabo, are you with us? Mm -hmm. I'm listening, Chirabo. Okay, we go to. Yes, I who fell out of the ring. Mm -hmm. Let me see, Agatha. Yes, Agatha. Taking long. Mm -hmm. So we can go to Stacy. Stacy, can you give us the answer? Stacy is not ready. That one I have. Lisa, give us the answer. A certain boxer who fell out of the ring finally won the fight. Thank you very much. A certain doctor, I mean boxer who fell out of the ring, finally won the fight. That's what I wanted. This word certain here, in the first sentence, we have the word certain. We did not have the in this first part of the sentence. So you can't say the boxer who fell out of the ring. That would be wrong. Include this. A certain boxer who fell out of the ring finally won the fight. Number two, let me hear from this one first, yes? A certain? A certain I said Jack from TZ. Did I say TZ? Where did you get the word from? From TZ. Write this. Jack from. Uh -huh. Bring. You bring. So this one is. Where is it? So you have started with this. You have started with this. Leaving out those ones. Please follow. Have you heard? You write what it is supposed to be there. Okay. Then we go to uh, Mutes, 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 Mutes. Mutes, can you tell us number two? Um, a certain jackfruit, a certain jackfruit which fell on my head weighed seven kilograms. Weighed seven kilograms. Then we go to number three and number three is um this is a very can you tell us number three oh. certain people who get everything right are doing well are doing very well are you are you among those people who are Doing very well, getting everything right. Okay, let's let us add on some. Let us add on more three. We are going to add on more three. Do I have any questions from Lisa? Yes, Lisa, ask. Teacher, on number two, is it okay mm. if you say 
a certain jackfruit that weighed seven kilograms fell on my head. Is it okay? Which one comes in first? That fell on my head. Is that very clear? That is the best. The other one you have changed. Uh huh. There's somebody there who also wants to ask. Mwingo. Teacher, when is it necessary to put commas when answering? Uh, in this one here, we don't put commas. I told you we have two types of relative clauses. We have what we call defining relative clauses. Now you are pushing somewhere very far. Defining relative clauses and we have none or non defining relative clauses. So when we are dealing with non defining relative clauses, we put two, we put the commas and they must be two. We shall look at that one later. So today we are looking at defining relative what? Clauses, is that very clear? Do you still have a question? Muingo, um, do you still have a question? Can you now talk? Teacher, by giving the second sentence and they trying to make the person known to us. By putting the second sentence. The second, let's take an example. A boxer who fell, I mean a boxer who fell out of the ring, finally won. The, the issue is he won. Is that very clear? But he was not known to you. You only came to know him. First things first, the other ones will come on later. Is that very clear? In these sentences in here. Yes. No way you are going to eliminate unless they have told you to do so. I told you last time when I was expressions of content. And I told you that when we look at expressions of content, definitely you have to follow the instructions that are given. Here, when we are teaching, that is how we teach. And now when we are writing, then we shall tell you, join the following pairs of sentences together by changing the first statement into a relative clause. So if I give you and I say, begin the, then you can now go on. Is that very clear? So the first one is, the first one is, uh, let's take an example still of number three. Certain people uh, get everything right. They are doing well. So that one does not mean that you really know them. Those ones who get everything right. It doesn't necessarily mean that you know them. For you to say the pupils, no. The ones who do well, do you know their names? That's why they are saying they do very well, but they are certain. Okay, now we go to the next one. A certain car crashed into the tree. A certain car, a certain car crashed into the tree. Stop. It was my uncle's. It was my uncles full stop mm. now that one really tells us properly that your uncle came you came to know that it was your uncles later on okay yes how can it be when you join them together Certain car which crashed or that crashed 
into blah, 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 was my uncles. Okay. The last one is uh, a certain tree bears coconuts. A certain tree, a certain tree bears coconuts. It is it is a kind of palm, a uh, kind of palm. Okay, it is a kind of palm. All right, uh, let's go to Wendy. Wendy? Um, teacher, uh, a certain tree which bears coconuts is a kind of palm. Thank you very much, it's a kind of palm. So that is the first type of relative clause we have been dealing with. If I may go back now to our lesson to review, we started by getting to know what a clause is. We started by defining a clause and we said that clause is a group of words that include a group of words that include a subject and a verb to form a simple sentence or part of a sentence. That's what we said. Now we defined a relative clause as a clause or that part of sentence which has a subject and a verb attached to an antecedent, an antecedent by a relative pronoun. So we say the relative pronoun is which, that, who, and many others, as we shall get, uh, get to know them as we move on. We define antecedent, and we say the antecedent is just a thing that exists before. In this terminology, therefore, grammatically it means that part of a sentence that comes before, it precedes, and it precede simply means before. And when we use pro, it means after. So, we therefore said that a relative clause is a clause attached to that part of a sentence that comes before uh, the main one and is joined together by a relative pronoun, which relative pronoun is that, relative pronoun is which, a relative pronoun is the uh, who, now we said who is used when we are looking or we are talking in terms of human beings. And then that and which is looked at in terms of things. That's how we have explained relative clauses. Now in our relative clauses, we gave an example. We said, I started by asking a question, where is the boy? And then the question you asked was, which boy? We answered, why I made a full question and said, the boy that came in uh, late in class. So we had to put it together and say, the boy who came in late 
ethnic class is seated at the back of the, uh, the, the classroom. So we were now giving what we call relative clauses. That is definitely what we call a relative clause. It has a relative pronoun. It's joined together by a relative pronoun. Now, a relative pronoun has two parts of a sentence. It has a main sentence, I mean, main part of the sentence, and a dependent one. A dependent one depends. It sits on the other. Or we can call it subordinate clause. Subordinate simply means dependent. Somebody depending on the other is a, a subordinate. So these two types of sentences are joined together by a relative pronoun. So those are the ones that we gave. Uh, we gave. Now, I would like also to, to let you know that when we are dealing with relative pronouns and those questions, we are definitely dealing with full statements or sentences. Full statements or sentences. That is why when we talk about where is the boy, and you ask which boy, somebody says, the boy who came in late. Now you have to construct a sentence in full using that relative pronoun. So when you find somebody saying, he asks you, where are you going? To the market. And somebody removes the sentence, I mean the question, where are you going? You don't know the question they are asking. That type of sentence, that type of statement is called an incomplete sentence. That's what we're dealing with. So now the next one we shall look at is the relative clause type two. The next one is what we call relative clauses relative clauses of type two, relative clauses of type two. That is the next we are going to have. We started a little bit late. Can we use the 10 minutes uh, on the top or you are tired because I have five minutes to go to one, but we started the 10 minutes late because the machines had not been probed. Can I continue? Definitely, yes. Uh, in type two, we have which book did Ben read? We want to see this one also. Which book did Ben read? That is the question. Please I would like you to get to know this very well. When you are using these relative pronouns and they are coming at the beginning of the sentence or in any question here, this one here is of high pitch. The word which must be of high pitch. Who is that one shouting must be of high pitch. You don't put it down. You will not understand it at all. Uh, Regina has a question. Can you ask? You have written which book did Ben? Which you have book? not completed. Oh, you have not completed your sentence. Yeah, but at least you have. Which book did Ben? Read. Thank you very much for being very observant.
What's happening? Can you guys see teacher? Because I can't. No. It says that Wendy is the host now. Yeah, I also don't know what's going on. Okay. Hey guys, what happened to teacher? Yes, they can. Maybe the lesson is done, so we can see if it's first time, I'm not sure. So should I end the meeting or... I think you should end the meeting now. Yeah, I we think should all just go. Okay. Okay, let me end. Bye.